Oh, awesome. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. I love the boys. The guys are great. Um, Aslan and Dirk, I think, uh, are a match made in heaven. <laughs> they might not like me saying that, but um, great guys. I mean, they're so much, so much younger to me, you know, and uh, um, they always tell people that like I'm, I'm like the father figure and I sort of uh, help them along. Um, sort of generally on where the, where the administration of music is going, you know, because music wise, the, they would have to be, you know, geez, you know, I, I can't compare them with anyone else because they are incomparable. Their, their unbelievable talent, their, their, their beats, their, their, oh, their, their, their writing skills, um, even their voices, you know. Uh, something that Sri Lanka should be proud about and um, I, I support those guys all the way and I will help them in any way I can. Um, not to say that I don't like the other talent I see around. Um, I have met a lot of people here and I've seen a lot of acts and I've, I've seen a lot of things happening. But I think for that genre of music that we're looking at today, whether it's techno or house or deep funk, that's a new genre, genre of disco music I brought into this field, deep funk. Meaning, uh, melody lines with, <clears throat> with a beautiful deep meaning in it, you know. Um, something I would put in that particular field would be, uh, but it was the number one song for quite a while. Uh, where the guy actually whistles the tune, is it Florida? Yes, yeah. Florida, Florida whistle. Yeah. yeah. And uh, no, a song like that, how awesome, simple, very simple, you know, you, you'd hear it 25,000 times a day and you'd think, oh, how simple can you make? And uh, me being with the experience I have, I, I could look back and think to a song like, you know, done by Doris Day in the 50s called, When I Was Just a Little Girl, you know? Okay, Sarah, Sarah. So it's, it's things that you, 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 you hook on these beautiful melody lines, you know? And uh, to me that is, uh, and then you put a nice funk beat underneath it, you know, and, and it's deep funk. You know, the strangest thing was that Aslan and I, uh, and uh, we were in the studio and we were working on different ideas and, uh, uh, you know, he has this knack of coming up with incredible, um, beats and rhythms and chords and um, he came up with this dun, 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 you know, um, and this is the gospel truth and I said hold it there I said, hold it I think you've got something there you know and uh, he look, looked at me in a strange sort of way and then he said oh okay um, let's work on it then so that song which everybody loves and which is actually, strangely enough, the second track of the album. It should have been the first track. But the reason for it being second track of the album is because sometimes record companies control your destiny and they feel they can tell you what to do. And most of them do, actually. So don't, don't uh, for any moment imagine that the, that the artist controls everything. It's the people that pay the bucks that control things. And um, they said, no, uh, we think um, Soul Sound should be the first single and um, don't know why it should be the second one. So I said, okay, but, but don't know why. And the secret I'm telling you is not out yet. Uh, I left uh, Australia on a Thursday. The single was released on a Monday. And on a Wednesday, we had something like 217 downloads from radio. It's, it was one of the most downloaded track in Australia. I keep telling everybody <clears throat> who asks me this question, no one can predict a hit. Even when you're writing it, no artist, you, look, you can talk to Mick Jagger, who's on the comeback trail again, 50 years later. Um, or you can talk to Bruno Mars or Usher or Madonna or Lady Gaga, they'll all tell you that if one can predict a hit single, we'd be driving Rolls Royces because it'll be so easy to do, but you never know. But the good thing is that once you have one hit record, 
the rest is pretty easy to do. But having said that, you also got to be lucky. There's millions of artists out there in the world, but only a few are chosen. Uh, which reminds me of a biblical caption, many are called but few are chosen. But it's actually, uh, strangely enough, a sad, sad situation. So much so that some artists have got to get on these programs like American Idol, Australian Idol, I don't know what you call it here, you know, and you get X Factor and this factor and uh, America's got talent, and England, you know, British talent, you know, England's got talent, and all these massive talent shows that are coming up now um, to try and break themselves. And most of the artists, most of the artists have been around like me for years and years and years and not getting a break. So that's frustrating them so much that they had to come back and do something like this. Which is also good, uh, but it's also bad. Uh, the reason I say that is, um, in my particular instance, um, when I had my album out, we've had about two or three shows going around Australia, you know, like, Australia's Got Talent, The Voice, and, you know, Australian Idol. And people download these tracks on iTunes and uh, the charts, the charts uh, are organized in such a way that it's on sales and only on sales. So these artists would get so much TV coverage and create such a hype behind them that the songs crash into the charts and then when an artist like me who's not on the show, not a big name like uh, an usher or Lady Gaga or something like that, uh, is fighting out there with gloves on just to sustain the charts because it's on sales. And uh, the strangest thing was when this talent show was on, all these artists, like in the top 10, there were seven of them. And there was not one original in that. It was all other people's songs. And songs that have been hits in the past and all that. So the young audiences don't understand that and they're very fickle and they just go and download these things and uh, whatever. And uh, my particular album, which was struggling at number five, number two, then back to five, then back to 12 and up again to number two. It was, it was very hard because uh, uh, there were changes. So what I would say like almost artificial changes taking place because of the massive television push behind these artists. And, and of course, it's all to do with telephone calls and rah, rah, rah. And the very fact that a single costs so cheap on iTunes, whereas an album costs a fortune, so my album was having a bit of a problem. Uh, this particular album, Don't Funk With Me, has a new version of Disco Lady on it. Uh, it's been remixed, redone by the sheriffs. I think they've done an awesome job. And uh, That particular track, I think, is still still stands the test of time, so they can get it on the album. Now, uh, for more reasons than one, the album, I don't know whether it's available here or not, but uh, I suppose it'll take some time when it'll be out here on, uh, uh, you know, the Sony distributed, I suppose, it'll come down the line here at some stage, you know.